Hey guys, welcome to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimzeski with Adam Atkinson, and we're going to start a new series on the topic of off-season training. And before I get started, I, I think we need a couple of qualifications here, Adam. First of all, we have a what I would call a super series. So I interviewed three strength coaches for features, and so we have a part one, two, and three uh, expose, if you will, on training. So I think that would be fantastic for anybody who is interested in this topic. But specifically with off-season training, I, I think there are some important points of transition and progressions that we'll make later on in the series. But, but first, uh, even though we're invariably going to leave some things out, I mean, this is a pretty big topic. We're talking about the physiology of muscle development. Uh, let's, let's talk about initially kind of a, a, just a survey of physiology, because I think that's where most people who aren't necessarily educated in this industry it's, it's really helpful for them to know. So if you go all the way to, uh, you know, the, the sarcomere level of a muscle fiber and how the Z lines, uh, you know, a, approximate the, the myofibrils acting in myosin filaments and, and, and every single muscle fibers job from point A to point B from origin to insertion between tendons is simply just to contract like an accordion, like that's its only job. And if we can conceptualize that and then start to add in all of the layers, which again, we'll talk about over the course of the series of, of variables, the, uh, you know, how much force you're producing, how do you create that force? What about muscle angles, joint angles? What about things like intensity and volume and frequency and duration? So it's just a general introduction to the topic of the physiology of muscle development. Uh, how, how deep do you go with your clients? I mean, are, are some very, very interested or, you know, I'm assuming you do some training progressions as well as just nutrition coaching. Yeah. More people, I think on the training side, just seem to be, you know, wanting to be told what to do. Uh, however, I, I think the biggest debate and the biggest question I get are about the rep ranges and, uh, um, and particularly to, um, women might want to grow like a certain part of their glute uh, more than another. And uh, probably a good time to pull out the myth that, you know, muscles don't just partially contract. Uh, they, it, they contract with full force every time, even if you're lifting a light load. So, um, you know, these, these shaping and, uh, you know, um, you know, increasing certain parts or changing the shape of the muscle just really doesn't exist. However, you can grow the muscle, which accentuates the, the current shape of it, or it gets bigger. So um, I get questions like that, or debunking those myths, because people will want to kind of change the shape of the mu muscle, and we have to kind of take them back a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have such a knack, Adam, for walking right into the biggest topics that we that we discuss. And I, I don't think I would have even mentioned that all or none threshold, the physiological threshold that a muscle fiber either contracts with full force or not at all. And, and so that is important to understand because that's that's a, a page right out of my songbook. Whenever I'm talking to clients who want all of these magical little things like, hey, help me just grow my upper chest or my, my glute medius because the judges said I need that bigger heart shape of my glutes. I'm like, well, you know, you're, you're still just have to do heavy, heavy, stiff legged deadlifts and hip thrusts and squats and leg press. Like there's, I can't give you a magic exercise that will only work that. Uh, so, so I think that's a super place to start. And I, I love what you said. I'd love to hear more about how clients love to be told what to do because I'm finding now more than ever, a big interest in training. I, 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 I've never seen so many clients who really want to pick this apart. And I, and I think it has a lot to do with some of the industry leaders and friends of ours who are doing a great job of highlighting the entire topic. Yeah, you know, I, I think a lot of it does, a lot of the questions I get do come from Brent Contreras and uh, I'll almost see the video right before I get asked and uh, I kind of know where the client's going with the question. So I could say that I see that resurgent um, I actually trained with Brett for a while, and uh, actually, he's one of the reasons that uh, I think I create better programming for bikini athletes, because for a year or two, you know, I did his training, and uh, 
uh, I did it to learn and uh, see what he did. Because personally, I think he's one of the best at what he does. So I actually still this day share many clients with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as I do, one of my IFBB pro competitors uh, was, you know, actually just sent me a note, like Scott copied the screenshot that Brett said, you know, because I'm working on her nutrition, he's doing some of the, the leg and glute development work. So uh, other influencers like Brad Schoenfeld, of course, uh, Helms and, and everybody. So I think there's a lot of, of great things happening. And as we lead into episode two, I think we're going to be able to kind of pull apart this concept you discussed a little bit more because we're going to talk about the importance of strength in development. So you guys stay right where you are. We will see you next time in Contest Prep University for episode two in off-season training.